Father, thank you for all of your kindness and goodness to us. Thank you here for another round table today. I ask you to guide us and direct us in what we say, to encourage people, to build them up, to lift the Christ up. For whatever they're going through out there that see us today, we encourage them in the Lord. We strengthen them. We send the Holy Spirit. We say, rise up within them, Holy Ghost. Rise up and help them. Yes. And we thank you for it, your kindness. You. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, welcome back to another uh, roundtable. We are in the end of August, getting ready to start the school year, start September, and get this thing rocking and rolling. Of course, Dr. Darrell, Dr. Debbie on the end, and my mother, Dr. Jean, in the middle. And in case you get us mixed up, well, then you just probably shouldn't watch. <laughs> Dr. Darrell. Okay, thank you. Uh, today, I wanted to start off with, we haven't, we haven't really been able to discuss any topic. We said, well, let's just start the thing and see where God takes us. I was wanting to start with this. Uh, the atmosphere. You know, we started our first round table with that kind of thing. But I wanted to talk about the atmosphere because it's, it's extremely important. I said, people being beheaded. Yes. ISIS making threats against the homeland. Uh, Ebola, mm -hmm. the climate. Um, I mean, every time you turn on the tape or every time you turn on TV or Facebook, something it's something else. Earthquakes. Yeah. Floods. Floods. Mm -hmm. uh, ALS challenge, mm -hmm. which is brilliant and it's awesome and praise God for it. But remember, every time you see it, you're being reminded of ALS of Lou Gehrig's disease and what that damage can do. And in Jesus' name, we yes. curse that disease. Yes. We yes. curse its effects. Yes. We curse the pain that it brings to families mm -hmm. and to people. Mm -hmm. And we release the power of God to heal. Yes. We want to lift up the Christ. We want to lift up the healing and help the people. Yes. I'm not against it. I'm just saying every time you go out there and open up your links, your news or your Facebook right. or mm -hmm. your Twitter or just your friends and family, you're gonna talk about the environment, you're gonna hear every day how bad it is, and then the next day you're gonna hear about what a bunch of junk that is, literal junk, you know, more ice than ever in the Antarctic for well, at least 35 years. And then you hear about solar power even, where, well, they wanna get 35% fossil fuels in there to power it because solar power is not being able to cut it. Yeah. You're going, well, what's the point? <laughs> anyway, so you hear all of this, nothing seems to be working. Now, well, let's get to the point where I was wanting to go today. All of that's your bedrock. That's, that's kind of like what you're immersed in. And then the church picks up the blood moons. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the blood moons. I am not putting that down at all. I am not in any way coming against anything, but I'm saying, I told mom on the way home today from lunch and coming home and I said, mom, if we get to the point where we decide it is done, you begin to think differently. <laughs> you begin to act differently. Yes. You make different decisions. Yes. Correct. If you believe you're done, like age, Abraham. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm past my sell by date. Yeah. I am old. <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't understand computers. Biological time clicking. And, and it wasn't this way in my time. You yeah. know, they didn't act this way in my time. They did. We just didn't have 24 hour right. news and it wasn't as prevalent. And because the world's always been nuts. Correct. You know, and we just didn't see it. Right. And um, so there's all this going on. And in the church, this is wonderful thing about Jesus is coming soon. Yeah, they've been saying that for 2,000 years. And he is. And I believe it is that season. It is, yes. it is amazingly near. But that's not the end. Jesus isn't wrapping up. Yes. He's he's Ramping revving up. up. <laughs> In other words, you don't. We're not going out here poor, disgusted, broke, and and just by the skin of our teeth. Mm -hmm. It's going to be laughing with joy yes, yes, and rejoicing yes, yes. with new bodies walking. I'm, I mean, just going out of here, kind of going, see you guys. <laughs> Sucks to be you, you know. And I mean that that's not that's irreverent, but but it's kind of true. It's like, look, dudes, we've been preaching on every street corner. We've been putting it out on the web. I mean, people of God have been all over the world. We proclaim it day after day. And and if that's not bad enough, then we hear about well, your doctrine isn't quite right. Yeah, <laughs> your doctrine's not right. And I'm going. I don't have a doctrine. I got the doctor. Yes. Jesus the Christ, period. Amen. End of story. Amen. That is my doctrine. It, it focuses not on my actions or my deeds or anything I do other than believing in Christ Jesus and telling yes. you about it. Yes. Now, if you want to be the, the action sheriff, if you want to be the performance sheriff, man, go at it. Praise God, I give it to you. 
I may even send you some, some support to help you in it. But I got news for you. My whole complete reliance is on Christ Jesus yeah. yes. and his doctrine. Yes. Yes. As dad used to say, pre, pan, and post millennia, or, or, or millennia, millennialist view. Right. And he was a pan. It's all going to pan out in the end if you believe in Christ. <laughs> that's right. So that's where I wanted to start. When the church believes that this is the age of the return of Christ and, and it's going to get worse and the Antichrist, they're focusing on the blood moons and the, and the judgment of God and stuff. And I have news for you. We're going to see judgment. What does Psalm 91 say? But it's not going to come near me. A thousand yep. may fall at my, my side. side and 10,000 10, at, right at my right hand. <laughs> So can we confidently say that or they're going, no, Daryl, that's just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. How are you any different than anybody else? I'm not. Except for Christ. Except for this. Yes. I believe it. Yes. yes. Well, why didn't it happen to them? I can't tell you. <clears throat> I'm not saying they didn't believe or did believe right. or what. That's not my, I'm not in them. I don't know yes. them. I'm just saying, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Yes. And we yes. are different. We are new creations. Yes. yes. We are new creations. Yes. It's not appointed to us to go through the <laughs> right. wrath. Right. Jesus took the wrath. Yes. Yes, he did. yes, yes. Now the people that are left here when Jesus comes back physically to this earth, long time from now, it's, it's not gonna be pretty for them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he's coming back as the king. He came the yes. first time as the lamb. He's coming <clears> back, he's going to be like we've never seen him. The government yes. will be upon his yes. shoulder. In other words, yes. he is the sheriff. Yes. At the, yes. I mean, the big sheriff. Yes. Yes. You thought I was wimpy first time? <laughs> No more. It wasn't about wimp. It was an incredible right. strength yes. and grace. Yes. yes. He goes, but the next yes. time is to wrap this thing up and yes. say, for all of that junk you've done to my people and they've had to put up with for all these years. Yes. Now's the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now our hope and our prayer, and I'm going to be quiet here in a minute, and let you guys wrap a little bit, but my hope and prayer, <laughs> my hope and prayer as, as it says in the word, that it is God's will that all men come to a knowledge yes, of his son, Jesus yes, Christ. Yes. That is our prayer. The Lord send out labors into the Amen. harvest. As in, I think it was Matthew chapter 9, it talks about Jesus praying that prayer. Send, send forth labors into the harvest, Father. Send today mm -hmm. so that all men yes. can know Jesus and to know him uh, resurrected and the finished work of Christ. And him alone, not doctrine. Yes. Last word. Yes. <clears throat> Jesus looked at the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he says, you think that your knowledge of the scriptures, yeah. you find salvation. Mm -hmm. And he says, I, I will counter your argument and say, mm -hmm. if you really knew the scriptures, they would tell you about me. Yes. And since you don't know me, then you really don't know the scriptures mm -hmm. because all of the scripture all of it, the scripture can't save you. It is the word of God, but it yes. doesn't save you. Jesus is the word. If that Amen. word is not Amen. energized when you read it and, and by the Holy Spirit opened up so you can see it and become Jesus or the word in you, it's just scripture. Because that Bible is not holy. The words in it, yes. when they come in you and the Holy Ghost yes. opens them up and brings revelation, that yes. is when it becomes holy. Yes. When Christ in you is exploded, what is it? John 6, something or other. It says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit, are spirit and, and, they are life. and they are life. Yes. That's what I believe. Yes. What yes. say you? Yes. Yes. Nothing? I say that, um, you know, a lot of people want to see. If I could just see. If I could just, you know, if I saw a miracle, then I could believe in miracles. If I saw this or saw that, I could believe. And yet we have the disciples that were with Jesus three and a half years. Yeah. We have in the account of the uh, men on the road to Emmaus and Jesus came up to them and they said, well, he said, why are you sad? And they were like, don't you know what was uh, happening? And so then they said, we thought, mm -hmm. we believed that he was a prophet and a great teacher. And so they, they saw. They saw the miracles, they saw everything, but it's still seeing does not make you a believer. You believe and then you can see. Second Corinthians 5, 7. But you just to believe, I mean, to see, so that is a lie. The enemy um, tricks us, deceives us to make us think, oh, well, if I had that, then everything would be okay. Or if I could see that, then it, no. 
If you can't believe now based on the word of God. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Seeing anything can always yes. be explained away. I mean, look at the children mm -hmm. of Israel. Look at all the miracles, the, the seas parting, the ten plagues on the Egyptians, all those things that they saw, and yet they were stiff-necked. Mm -hmm. They didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. They did what they needed to do to get free, but then their heart was exposed mm -hmm. in the wilderness. They didn't really mm -hmm. believe. They just, and how many of us have done that? I will, we want to manipulate God. I'll do whatever I need to do to get my answer, but I really don't believe that. Yeah. Even in prayer, let me manipulate God and tell him how to do it and then I'll get what I want, but that's not really me. It doesn't work. And it doesn't work. <laughs> and when I try to tell God what I want and how to do it, I can only come up with just a couple of suggestions. And I have found that in my lifetime, when God has met me, it has come from the most unexpected place. Yeah. Something that never in my wildest dream would I be able to figure it all out. And yet God was faithful in every instance and brought it about. So I praise the Lord because we can know Jesus and we can have him living in us. And only then do we have life and life more abundantly when Jesus Christ is in us who shows us the way and gives us revelation. The scriptures that you read, you can read them and maybe some of you like I have read them all your life. And suddenly you're reading the scripture and you see something you've never seen before. And it's absolutely amazing how the Lord opens the word to us as we're following him and listening to him. Amen. And in the Greek, uh, I forget what the, how the Greek word is pronounced. It, oh, no, it's the uh, Hebrew the, with the, th the thumen and the mm -hmm. urim, which were the things yeah. that are here. When you bring that into English, it means lotto. No, I was just kidding. That was too easy. That's one of the answers I give God often. Just give me a lotto, brother. Give me a lotto. I could save a lot. You know, there's a lot of people I could help. A lot of things I could do. Now, let me tell you, if I ever hit the lotto, I am going to give Jesus all the glory and praise. Because I got no problem with that. <laughs> but money's not our issue. Now, that is an uh, easy thing to say. But it's the truth. Money is just, as uh, was it uh, Proverbs? No, no, it's Ecclesiastes, I think, that says money answers all things. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely accurate. It answers all things. It's not necessarily the right answer, though. But it can answer. Right. Mm -hmm. You can throw money at health issues. Right. The woman who had the issue of blood yeah. threw money at it for 12 yeah. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm took all she had and was yeah. none better. It was an answer, mm -hmm. but it was not the right answer. Right. The right answer was getting to Jesus. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so money is not necessarily the right answer. It can answer it. It can give you right. a sense of security right. or a right. sense of help and a sense of relief. Definitely. If, yeah. if I could just get this bill paid, there'll be something else. Trust me. Sure. There is no shortcuts in faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yeah. are, you, you know, you're famous for saying it in prayer meetings with pastors. And we repeat it often here is I want to get my faith to the place where I don't yes. need it anymore. <laughs> we don't have to have faith anymore. That's like saying I want to learn to walk so I don't have, have to walk to learn, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's really the truth. Mm -hmm. you, you think at some point that your faith, mm -hmm. you, that it's some yeah. magical thing like riding a bike and then you never have to learn it again. It's yeah. just there. Yeah. And you're saying, but let's take this into reality. Mm -hmm. As you don't ride your bike for a while mm -hmm. and then you go back and get on it, what happens? I sold mine. Yeah. It is not that <laughs> you forget how. You're insecure. You get very, in, yeah. very nervous about falling. Yeah. Yes. And yes, about, you do. and you're just like, you're thinking about yep. that. Yep. And so this is what happens to your faith. Yes. Yeah. Yes. When your faith is an exercise, when you get back up there, you haven't forgotten how to use it. Mm -hmm. It's just, you're going like, I don't like not knowing what's happening tomorrow <laughs> all the time. I like to know that there's money in the bank mm -hmm. and that everything's going to work out. Right. I like to know everything's all right. And, and the truth is, if you're in Christ, it is. Yes, yes. Paul said yes. it. He goes, look, I've learned that in all things, mm -hmm. um, in whether all I'm, things. Whether I'm abased or I'm abounding. Down or up. A, yep. a pauper, a poet, a pirate, a king. A, no, wait a minute, that's <laughs> somebody else. Anyway, uh, but it's like up or down. Yeah. In Christ, I can go through all of those things and come out the other side. Yeah. Three Hebrew children walked through the furnace. 
I don't think that was something they wanted to do. No, <laughs> I don't think so. But it even goes beyond that because even if I walk through something and I get to the other side and I, I'm not what I think is good, he tells us in Joel that he restores the years. Mm. Yes. So even if I go through something and I'm, I, I'd come through the other side, like yeah. if I was in a lion's den and the, and the lion took my arm off and I didn't walk out whole, God can restore my arm. Yeah. And so the thing is we can't ever, ever not believe. Doesn't matter what I'm seeing, doesn't matter how long, God can change it in a moment. Yes, yes. It is ours, uh, what is it, 2 Corinthians 6, I believe too. Now is the appointed time. Mm -hmm. Now is now. The, the season. Now yeah, is the chosen. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, to put yes. this in some sort of context, like with the four blood moons, brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's accurate, it is brilliant, it is a sign to the Jews and to the world. It is Correct. a sign. Right. But for you Christians, I got news for you. You've gotten your sign. Mm -hmm. Your sign is the blood yes. of Jesus yes. Christ yes. on yes. your heart. Yes. You are not the Jews mm -hmm. and you are not the Gentiles. Right. Mm -hmm. You are new creations in Christ yes. Jesus. Thank God. Your signs don't have to do with this yes. world. Right. Yes. You can look at them as Christ said and you're going, could be getting close. Doesn't matter to me either way. Because when my days are over, whether it's the end or not, it's my end. I'm going to be with Jesus. <laughs> right. Now is the day of salvation. Yes. Here's something that's going to be controversial, man. and this is what I, I came here to say. Seasons. Go ahead. Seasons are a figment. It seems like we go through seasons in life. That's the human thing, and that's the natural thing. And, and we've adopted that spiritually and we have a lot of spiritual precedent. But at the end of the day, when Christ came up out of that grave, yes. he said, now, there is not, I'm just going to say he is the Jubilee year. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the mm -hmm. Sabbath. He is that. He is yes. Lord of the yes. Sabbath. He is Lord yes. of the Jubilee. In him are all the promises of God. Yes, yes. And, and amen. And amen through us yes. to Correct. the glory of God. Correct. The answer to your prayers, your body's healed, your debts destroyed and, and, and wholeness and joy and hope coming to you, that's gonna give glory to God. What happened yes. to the guy that was born, I think blind or crippled? He was born in, in a bad way and somebody said, mm -hmm. was it because he sinned? Or his parents. Or his parents. Do you remember what Jesus said? Neither, for the glory of God. He didn't say God did this. Right. Yes. He didn't say it was yes. a parent's yes. sin, right. fault. He said, look, this is a, 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 the world we're living in has corruption in it. Yes. Things happen. And he goes, but neither, it's not because of sin. He said, but it's going to be to the glory of God. Yes. Amen. Get up and walk or yes. open your eyes, whichever yes. it was. Yes. The guy got healed. That's the glory of God. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to tell you the season, you don't have to wait till the blood moons are full. If you, if that's what you want to do, that's okay. That's okay. Thomas said, let me touch it. Let me see it. Go man. God, Jesus is still going to reveal himself to that's you. Right. So don't, I'm not putting it down. I'm just saying you don't have to wait. Now is the appointed time. Now, what does it say? The harvest is ripe now. Don't say it's three months and then the harvest. Yes. 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 Now is the time. What does if Hebrews 11, 1 say? Faith. Now faith. faith is the substance. Now not faith. Yes. Not Yesterday's faith, tomorrow's to, faith. Not, but even now. Now, now. now. Oh, now that's old. Now, yeah. now, now, now that's old. Now, immediate, now. Immediate. Second to yes. second to second. Yes. Yes. Every day, every time that thing yes. wakes you up in the night or that thing you're driving down the road and you just, and you go, no, I am the righteousness of God yes. in Christ right. Jesus. Yes, right. yes, yes. Us, uh, First Corinthians uh, or Second Second Corinthians five seven, I think it says, "We walk not by sight, but by faith. Yes. Right. We walk by faith and not, not by, by sight, sight or feeling. That is what we do, and our faith is in mm -hmm. Him. Correct. Mm -hmm. Our faith is in the Healer. Our faith is in the yes. Provider. Our yes. faith is yes. in Jesus, His love for us, His righteousness for us. Yes. Yeah. His yes. having done it all. Yes. yes. Second Corinthians chapter eight, verse nine. I know the grace of God, how that though he was so very rich, he yet for our poor. sakes, he, he became so very poor that we might be made rich mm -hmm. through him. Yes. 
But I also wanted to go to Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. That was his anointed, the anointed one, Christ, Messiah means anointed one, anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing yes. all who were sick and oppressed Rest. of the devil. Mm -hmm. Oppressed of the devil. When it says genetic, <laughs> when it says in your DNA, if we weren't on camera, they'll tell you what I'd say about it. But I'm going to be nice today and be because my mom is here. But that's junk. That's for the world. You are a new creation. Mm -hmm. Oppression, sickness, and disease. I don't care who had it before you, but if Amen. you've got it, Amen. that's oppression Amen. from the enemy. Amen. And you have weapons yes. to fight that. Yes. Prayer and faith in Jesus Christ. Yes. The yes. body to lay hands on you and, and be healed. Yes. Now is the season. Yes. Just tell me to shut up here any minute. So, because you're I, doing good. <laughs> well, and what did Jesus say when he picked up the book and read it in the mm -hmm. in the temple? And in, in Luke chapter four, he's quoting out of Isaiah, and he says, "The acceptable year of the Lord." Now, we're not waiting. We're not. Um, um, it, it's all been done. When Jesus said it is finished, he meant it, it was, was finished. finished. And so, if if Jesus could send out the disciples with the power and authority to heal sickness before he was striked. Before they had the Holy Ghost in before him. Before they had it, before they were saved. Right. Yes. Because no one was saved before Jesus died and rose again. So how much more now that it's done? It's done. Yes. It's done. And we have part of the body that will say, oh, yes. healing's not for today. How could you say that? When he bore those, it's just because they don't have the revelation. He bore the stripes on his back. Yes. The word says that it is not God's will that any should perish. Well, I believe in that salvation. It's not God's so will for anybody to be sick or to be poor or to be lacking. He wants us to be whole. Yes. Nothing missing, nothing <clears throat> broken. broken. And so um, we're kind of taking a jack here, but like in the Old Testament, when... Um, uh, the, the law said an eye for an eye, and people look at that as revenge. No, that was about wholeness. So if I did anything, if, if you were doing some work for me and your cow was killed, then, I, then you've been- Cow for a cow, yeah. give me another cow, right. make so me whole. Then I need yeah. to make, restore to him. And so when the, when the greeting of Shalom was, Shalom, how's your peace? How's yeah. your wholeness? Yes. Are you whole? <laughs> And so I have peace because I'm whole. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus has done it all. He's done it mm -hmm. all. And I, I think this is where we miss it sometimes. If we're believing, then, then that shouldn't come upon me. So now I believed it and it came upon me. So therefore my faith isn't working. No, the devil is a liar. Mm -hmm. And he wants to come and make us think that something's coming. And when he comes, I go, I'm not receiving that. Uh, uh, a couple weeks ago, I was laying in bed. I told you about this. And I woke up in the middle of the night and I wasn't feeling well. I was, I mean, my stomach was really upset. I don't know what I'd eaten. And I found myself saying, Jesus suffered enough. Yes. yes I don't yes. have to suffer. He mm -hmm. suffered enough for me. And I want you to know, I went back to sleep. I think I woke up one more time. Jesus <laughs> suffered enough. I am not suffering this. And so it left me. And so we are going to have many opportunities when it comes. Am I going to believe? I'm not just believing for it not to come upon me. I believe that when it does try to come oh, upon me, and it will, will yeah. then I'm like, no, we're not coming there. Just like you were talking about Psalm 91 before. When I look and see a thousand fall at my uh, side and, side, and 10,000 at my right hand. So 11,000 people have just dropped dead around me that I have the faith and the mindset to be able to go, not me, not me. Is that arrogant or cocky? I don't think That's so. It's believing God what word. God said. If, and here's where, and you know, here's where you kind of, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is where I think we have to get kind of radical where we have to get kind of uh, rebellious against <clears> the normal <throat> uh, mind of thinking and maybe bravado in a sense, but if, God's, if God didn't mean it, he shouldn't have said it. Right. That's my, that's my take on it. It's like, God, 
I had nothing to do with this, your word. I had nothing to do with your decisions. Correct. And the Bible tells me of your own free will right. and yes. pleasure yes. and yes. love. You did these things for us and you made these promises, even at a double oath to Abraham. Yes. You walked in animal blood. Yes. And the fact that you can't lie, two oaths. Yes. yes. Yeah. That was your good Two pleasure. Two immutable things. Yeah. Voluntarily, yeah. Yes. good pleasure, and you willingly went into it. So if you said it, then, well, that's it. I believe it. If, if you didn't mean it, then, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't have, said have said it. it. Because it's okay for me to lie or cheat yes. or right. fail because I'm human. You Correct. wait. So yeah. if you said it, you got to do it. And the truth is he cannot lie. Can't. Impossible. Because even if he said... If he lied, it would come true. It would come true, exactly. I mean, so even if he said, okay, a two-headed purple uh, polka dot, you know, whatever, that would be created because his word. That's where Barney came from. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, God, we're going to talk about that. Okay. So, yes, the, the promises of God are yes. In and him, amen. And amen. If David, a little shepherd boy, walks into a camp of warriors, and the mighty anointed of Israel, Saul the king and Jonathan and, and all the warriors who decided they were running from the giant. Mm -hmm. Twice a day. Over and over. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I'm not blaming them, not making fun of them. I'm right. just yeah. illustrating Psalm 91. A thousand fall at my side and 10,000 at my, my right hand. hand. These were anointed men, wo oh. wonderful warriors. I mean, experienced, these veterans. were great veteran men. Yeah. But a little kid walks in there and he's been with Jesus, well, mm -hmm. The precursor, of course, but he's been with God out there in the desert, worshiping. He's one against the lion. He's one against the bears. Like, okay, well that, I, that just happened, you know. Yeah. And he walks in and he hears this and sees this and he goes, "What the heck is that guy doing?" Mm -hmm. And he says, "That guy, we got a covenant. That guy doesn't have a cup. What the heck is going on?" And somebody goes, "You know, there's reward if you believe. Yeah. There's reward." For anybody that'll stand up and slay that giant. And, and David before, goes, Wait what minute. is it? I'm only a pastor. I'm, I'm, I'm here to serve and give and nothing else. No, he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. I get what? Yeah. No taxes and, and the, the king's, king's daughter. daughter. And his brother chides him and, and he goes, hey, leave me alone. And finds somebody else and says, what do I get again? Tell me Tell that. Me again. Runs to the Saul. Saul hears about it, yeah. sends for him and says, what are you saying? He's going, I'll kill this giant for you. You know, I'll kill him. I'll kill him dead, dead kill him. Yeah. <laughs> and so that is, this kid, he knew, I don't care, all of the soldiers in, um, in Israel and the king himself, they're going, they're not seeing this. They're not seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah. They're falling by the wayside. I see health and healing and prosperity and abundance and joy. I see God's word coming to pass everywhere. Don't you guys, this is easy pickings. I pray for that, that zone. But not only that, I mean, of course, fear is illogical, so you, you're not going there. But, and I think you and I have talked about that, if, if Goliath could deliver. He could have. If he, he could have done, no, mm -hmm. but if he could have done why he, what he said he could do, why did he just threaten him for yeah, 40 he would days? Have. He would have done it. He, if, he if he could do it, why didn't he come mm -hmm. through? And how many times does the enemy come and, and talk in our ear? months, even mm -hmm. years, something that we're scared to death of, but never delivers yep. because the fear of it is enough. This yes. time yes. it's different. different. Though yes. I walk through the valley of the shadow. The of shadow. This time, yeah. you know, you're older. Yeah. This time the economy. Yeah. This time yeah. you should have been doing. Oh yeah. This time. Yeah. In other words, it's always this, this time. time. In other yeah. words, it's something you've done. It is you yeah. focused. It's all my fault. And not Christ focused. Yes. yes. That's yes. my job is to take the argument as God, as Jesus yes, did in the garden. Back on Christ. And God said, Jesus said, my father says, the word says this. When the temptation came, right. he turned it here. That's what we're mm -hmm. supposed to do when that temptation to be depressed and distressed and in pressure. He said, but Jesus in the garden, sweat out of his veins or his, in one of the gospels, right. out of his pores for that kind of pressure. Yes. For that kind of pressure in your life that you're just like, it, it, Jesus has already suffered. You can put that on him and say, he's already paid that cost. But the thing, and Daryl, what you said is, is it hits it on the head. Um, Jesus putting it back to, to God. Because the <clears throat> Satan is going to come at you with truth. Yep. What did he say to Jesus? If you are the son of God. He was the son of God. 
So he was making yeah. a true statement, but he was baiting Jesus, come on my territory. And Jesus kept uh, putting it back on him. When Paul was in the, was a, uh, yeah, Paul was in the shipwreck, and uh, he went and was gathering wood and the snake or viper grabs him and he shakes it off and, and throws it. And they go, oh, he must be a murderer because this judgment. He was he a was. murderer. Yeah. But he had been covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and that had been wiped out. Judgment came and found nothing, nothing in, in him, him because of Christ. So therefore yes. the, the snake had no uh, uh, effect Power. upon him. <laughs> so that's the thing. The enemy will come at us and tell us... May, a smidgen of truth. And the thing that this, that Satan left off when he came to Jesus was, if you are the Son of God, well, Jesus just left being baptized where the Word of God had come. This is my beloved Son. So Satan never comes and says, well, if you are the beloved of the Lord. And so you need to understand when the enemy comes at you, he's baiting you, trying to get you off of yeah. what God is saying and get you on your own strength and power. And that's always going to be a losing battle. But even Jesus answered with the word. Absolutely. Answered with the word. And going back to David, Saul even tried to get him to wear his armor. armor. And he tried it on and he wasn't going anywhere in that. And he gave it back and said, no, I can't do that. And he faced that mighty giant with the armor, with the helmet, with the uh, sword and the shield, with everything that was absolutely in the natural was a death sentence for David. And David just goes up with a little slingshot and five smooth stones and only had to use one stone. And he said, but I come in, in the, the name, name of, of the Lord. Yeah. Yes. And when we come in the name of the Lord, no matter how fierce that giant appears, that giant's got to go because the blood of Jesus Christ is greater than anything that we can ask, think, dream, or whatever, Ephesians 3.20, it, 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 the enemy has to bow. And life is full of circumstances. Mm -hmm. This is life. This is what life does to us. It's full of circumstances. And faith isn't, uh, I think so many times, I've tried to conjure up faith. <laughs> and it is so simple. It is flat believing the word of God. If God said it, we've got to believe it because his word is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no truth outside of the word of God and outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. It, the, the odds are something today that, that if God had you tune in to watch this, yeah, something's going on. That's the point. I know I'm a snappy dresser, but come on, you didn't tune in for that. So the point is, is you're here today. We want to build you up in faith. And it says faith in Hebrews 11, six, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, hearing the word, hearing the word brings faith and brings hope. Yes. But it's not just hearing the word as is any scripture. It's hearing the word about Christ. Christ. The Christ word. is the word. Yeah, he's yes. always the word. I want yes. to tell a story about that. <laughs> I, she I, just wants to hog it. Uh, I want to tell this story about my dad. My dad was a diabetic, and he, God gave him a witty invention. And in their retirement age, they built a golf course on what was pasture land. So it was a witty idea. It was a witty idea. Because I think it had been invented. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And, but God gave him this idea to build a golf course, and that's a whole other story. But Dad was out working on the golf course one day, and he got stuck um, with a palm frond. Uh, These big old thorns big that grow up thorn, out of the palm yeah, fronds. That, yeah, that's in the palm frond. And um, being a diabetic, he didn't realize how bad it was. And the foot became very, very infected to the point that dad was going to have his foot amputated. And so he was on the way to the doctor's office, to the surgeon's office. The surgeon was gonna check him, and then he was going straight to the hospital for surgery the following morning. And at that time, mom and dad were living in Florida, and my husband and I were living, I think, in, I don't know, we were in the north somewhere, Maryland or North Carolina. And- um, Here, yeah. North Carolina. And uh, 
when Dad got to the doctor's office, this was a Holy Ghost man filled with faith and with the word of the Lord in his mouth. And uh, the doctor said to him, said, Brother Morris, where were you at 2.30 this afternoon? And Dad said, well, I was on the bridge on the way over here to Tampa to come to your office. And the doctor said, well, I've got to tell you something. Said, I was praying about you here in my office. And the Lord told me that I was going to lay hands on you and you were going to be healed. Said, do you mind being a fool for the Lord? And dad said, no, I've done that before, so I'm ready. And the doctor said, well, I want you to stand on your foot. Now, dad had gone into that office on crutches, could not bear the touch of his foot on a floor because of the severe pain that he was experiencing. Infection and, and oh, inflammation, just, yes, imagine every, that. It's just, everything. Ugh. And um, <clears throat> dad said that he stood up gingerly and he started praising the Lord. And the next thing he realized, he was banging his foot on the floor up and down and he was totally healed in the doctor's office. Well, you can imagine what the people out in the waiting room must have thought, but whenever my dad left that office, instead of going to the hospital, uh, he left that office carrying his crutches and they went out to a favorite restaurant of ours and they called us from the restaurant and I said, oh dad, are you in the hospital now? He said, no, and he told us where he was at this lovely restaurant. And I said, what are you doing there? And he told me, the Lord has healed me. And the Lord had totally healed dad from that Amen. day. Yeah. And th that's our God in the midst of the most impossible situations. Jesus Christ has already paid the price. Amen. He paid that price with his back being uh, torn to bits with, with those whips they whipped him with. And Jesus has paid the price for your healing. Jesus paid the price for everything for us to be whole, body, soul, and spirit. Amen. And we believe that Amen. for you Amen. and for us today. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord. All right. Uh, anything? Let's, uh, we're going to end with prayer. going to ask mom to pray for us for hope for Christ to be lifted up in your life, for your eyes to be open to see Christ, to see Christ as Peter went in that water, to keep your eyes on Christ. And if your eyes are down here and you're sinking, look up because his hand's right there, man. Yes, he yes. will yank you out of those waves yes. and above those waves. He is not looking to let you, well, you took your eyes off me, that's it. He's going, no, my hand's out, I'll pull you up, let's go. And they walk back to the They walk back to the boat. And you know Peter, you know, he won some bets after that. No, I got pictures. <laughs> I was out there. I mean, if YouTube would have been, oh, boy, oh, man. We, he, well, there's another example of the enemy telling you you can't do what you're already doing. Yeah. yeah. He's walking on the water. Yeah. Oh, I can't do this. Well, I'm already doing yeah. it. Too late. You can't make it through this life. Yeah. yeah. I am 78. Look, <laughs> if you could have killed me, you'd have killed me a long time ago. Yeah, anyway, right. <laughs> so we want you to pray for their hope. And also pray that the uh, that the Lord send labors into the harvest yes. of yes. His own yes. church yes. this week yes. to yes. open their eyes to see there's more for them. Yes. Yes. Surrounded yes. by yes. the angelic yes. host yes. and the Word of God, there's more for you than there are against you. Mm -hmm. Jesus yes. is our supply. He is our season. Yes. He is yes. the accepted yes. time. Yes. Don't wait till next year. Don't wait till next Amen. month. Amen. Now is the accepted yes, time. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Father, we just worship you and we praise you. We thank you for the word that you have put in our hearts. We thank you, Lord God, for the many, many, many times that we've seen you come on the scene when it seemed like everything was hopeless. There was no help anywhere around. And Father, the word even says that hope deferred yes. makes the heart sick. And Lord, there may be those out there that their hope has been gone. They've believed and they've waited and it just seems like it will never, ever come. But Father God, you are in the midst of the situation. There's not one thing we face, but that you haven't already been ahead of us. Amen. You're in our todays, yes, you're yes. in our tomorrows. Yes. And Father, we speak in the name of Jesus over anyone whose hope 
seems to be fading away. Yes. And we ask that the faith in yes. the Lord Jesus, Jesus yes. Christ arises yes. in all of our spirits, O oh God. You, that hope, O oh God, comes back with a fervency, Father. And we see those things that you have established for our destinies in the name yes. of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And Father, we pray for anyone out there that could be facing illness today, and maybe they've gotten a bad report, but Father, we repeat, we, we, we receive the report yes. of the Lord, yes. and the report of the Lord is by my stripes you yes. were healed. And Father, we speak that report over yes. anyone that yes, is Jesus. ill today. And Father God, for those that could be facing financial issues, we mm -hmm. pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you said that you would supply oh, all of our go. need according to your, your riches. riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You're not going to supply. You don't supply according to my need. You supply according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes, Jesus. And Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that there will be people receive such miraculous uh, things happening in their yes. lives in Good every report. way oh, yes. that the report mm -hmm. that seems to be there on the horizon is absolutely changed. Father, it only takes an instant for you to change it. Yes. You don't have to take a long time. For me, it takes a while, but not for you. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, it's you come. In a moment, in a twinkling yes. of an eye. And we know that's talking also about your coming again and, and, and we'll be with you for eternity. But Father, in our situations, you come in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye. And Father God, we pray for the harvesters to go out. You said the fields are white unto harvest. Yes. And Father, we ask to see a great, great harvest. Yes. Yes. We ask for a great awakening yes. throughout America and throughout the world, Amen. oh Father God. Amen. We ask for revelation to come. We ask that it be like even uh, Saul when the, the, he was prayed for, Ananias prayed for him and scales fell off of his eyes and he had yes. revelation and he could see Jesus. and you changed his name from Saul to Paul. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for revelation to come, revelation to come to all of us, to pastors, yes. to people sitting in churches. Father, that scales will fall off of eyes and they will see things they will have never seen before and all the praise and all the glory belongs to you and goes back to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks for being with us today. We encourage you in the Lord. Read your Bible. Encourage yes, yourself. Yes. Turn off the news if you have to. <laughs> and and if uh, praise reports, go ahead and let us know about yes. it. Uh, go to yes. C-Life TV at C-LifeTV.org. That's the email address. We'll get the, the, the email address. C-Life TV at sealifetv.org. We'd love to hear what yes. you have to say. Yes. We'd love to, uh, to, to be encouraged. Maybe we'll read some of those on the air here someday. Yes. But again, thanks for being with us and we'll see you on our next uh, roundtable in a couple of months. God, God bless you. you.